in the Coolmore Lexington Stakes. Divining Rod and Fame and Power have speed, and Henry Jones is there between those two. Fame and Power, though, is determined to have the lead as they head down to the first turn and gets clear, starts to angle down toward the rail with the advantage. Fame and Power just in front of Divining Rod second, Henry Jones third up on the outside. Don Worth going to be three wide around the first turn, moving up to fourth, now challenging for third within two lengths of the lead. Then further back, tis now RJ outward from the rail in fifth ahead. Quimet is six back toward the inside, two more lengths back to Comfort, who got pinched back at the start. 24 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Fame and Power is the leader. Fame and Power leading to Vining Rod and Don Worth, who's up on the outside, challenging for that second spot. Henry Jones has backed away now at the fourth against the rail. Four lengths off the lead, midpoint of the back stretch. Then Clement, Tisnell, RJ, and Comfort is last, running six lengths off the lead. 47 and four-fifths seconds for the first half mile. Fame and Power leads it by a length of the fire turn. Don Worth just off his flight now in second by three parts of a length and then divining rod is third and a half length henry jones to the outside from fourth comfort is three wide and fifth four lengths off the lead and here comes don worth now to challenge fame and power at the quarter pole comfort closing in from third two lengths off that front pair and here comes divining rod moving by comfort changing lanes to the outside to the top of the stretch fame and power don worth divining rod takes aim from the outside these three moving past the eighth pole Div Vining Rod has taken the lead from Fame and Power and Don Worth. Comfort is fourth. Divining Rod is moving on for the finish. Divining Rod and Julian Leperu, convincing winner of the Coolmore Lexington Stakes. It was close for second. Either Don Worth or Fame and Power for the runner-up spot. Comfort was fourth. The time, one minute, 43 and one-fifth seconds. A moderate pace early on with the opening quarter mile, 24 seconds. Fame and Power traveling comfortably. The half mile, 47 and 4. Donworth looks to challenge him early, but look who swoops by everyone. Divining Rod. Yeah, and they weren't moderate late. They came home in 6 and 1. Divining Rod, but class prevails here, and it prevails in a big way. This cold showing, yeah, I've been graded stakes place twice, and there's reason for it. There was no ocean night. There was no carpe diem for him to deal with. He essentially caught a lightly raced field, and he was much the best. Julian Laperu rode him perfectly, but I don't know how many mistakes he could have made in this field. He let the speed unfold in front of him. It didn't unfold very fast. There's no excuse here for the horses that finished second and third. Domworth, Fame, and Power, they both got exactly what they were, wanted. Joel Rosario was basically tugged up into the second place position after they came out of that first turn because Donworth was so keen to move. Fame and Power got to do things easily on the front end, but when they turned for home, the better horse ran by them, and he wasn't helped by the pace scenario at all. Does this move up Carpe Diem in your mind and in the minds of those who are making a list for the Kentucky He's Derby? He's pretty high in my mind as it is. I mean, there's only one or two horses in front of him, and I think that's where he stands in the mind of the entire public. Carpe Diem looked to be a major contender, but yeah, with what he did to this horse when they matched up in the Tampa Bay Derby, he put seven lengths on him, and then here comes Divining Rod back to just easily handle this field today in the Coolmore Lexington. And now you bring it back to the Derby conversation because Divining Rod was the only horse it would make a difference for to get those 10 points. Donna brought it up at the beginning of the show. With those 10 points, he's the one that can sneak into the Derby. If we see a few defections, that point total might get him into the starting gate. And those silks were aboard one of the most famous Kentucky Derby winners in recent memory, Barbaro. Lale Stables, Divining Rod, takes the grade three Coolmore Lexington. Donna. I'm here with Mrs. Jackson, and she is begrudgingly doing this interview. You tried to get your husband to do it. I haven't talked to you since Barbaro fame, but welcome back to, you know, the three-year-old Frag. And what about the race from this colt today? Um, it was stupendous for us because he's um, always been most times in the first hole. And it, in the first hole, you have to send him. And he's never had the opportunity to take back and run behind the speed and he had that today and he showed that he could come on and um, kick in any anxious way. moments early when he didn't send from the one hole uh, no <laughs> congratulations go get your picture taken thank you all right guys good to see the jacksons back here with some nice three-year-old yeah, I, I just thought the late Barbaro was Pegasus on earth when uh, he just absolutely flew away from the field in the Kentucky Derby. And as Mike points out, Divining Rod could have an opportunity to go into the starting gate for Lale Stables. one 7 6 2, 5 to 2 over 8-5 over 5-2 over 5-1. We'll be back with...